Na. Don't feel bad if you can't hold a plank for a long period of time. When I first started my weight loss journey, uh, almost two years ago now, I don't think I could hold a plank for longer than like five or 10 seconds. So just slowly build up to it. The first day of the cut was literally the worst day because I was so hungry. Like I was like starving. Like I was legitimately hungry as hell. Good morning, good morning you guys and happy Wednesday. So, okay. Quite a bit of things to talk about. First of all, today is chest, shoulders, tries. <laughs> I still don't know what we're doing yet. It's gonna come to me in the moment. When we're out there, when I have the weights, when I become one with the dumbbells, it'll come to me. <laughs> so, not too sure what we're doing. Secondly, my hamstring feels a lot better. Still feel like a little something going on back there, but it definitely doesn't feel like it did yesterday. <laughs> so I'm just so freaking thankful. I took some more Aleve before I got here, so yeah, we're still going to do some type of cardio, just don't know what it's going to be because I really don't feel like it's in my best interest to do anything lower body at this moment in time because Friday is legs and I would much rather be able to go 100% on legs than to do some cardio with legs today and then not be 100% by Friday for the lifts. So, Still trying to figure it out. Thinking we're probably just gonna do like core. So the other day we did abs, but I'm thinking core would definitely be a good vibe. So we'll see. I'll figure it out when we get out there. Secondly, or thirdly, I weighed in today. I'm 263, so I've lost a total of like six pounds. Which, you know, first of all, when I initially weighed myself on Saturday, or was it Friday? Saturday, I was on my period. So for all the ladies out there, y'all know we'd be a little heavier when we were on our cycle in the first place. Like, that's just normal, right? My cycle's coming to an end, so my weight is slowly coming down a little bit. Then on top of that, any type of change that you do to your diet, you're going to lose, like, a couple of pounds within the first couple of days. Because a lot of it was just, like, water weight anyways, you know what I mean? So I'm excited to be 263. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited and I do not encourage you guys to weigh yourself as often as I'm weighing myself that's because I'm obsessed I get obsessed with stuff very 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 easily and quickly so, <laughs> so yeah just the fact that I see a little bit of a change in the scale makes me so excited whoop, 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 whoop. I am literally feeling like I've been starving myself technically no I'm not starving myself I am eating but I feel internally like I'm starving myself. <laughs> like, that's just what's been going on. And on top of that, we've been doing some really hard workouts in the gym on top of being in a caloric deficit. So I am not surprised that, what is today, Wednesday? So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Within five days, I dropped a little bit of weight. Still got a long way to go, but it's, you know, we're going down, not up. So that's exciting. That means the cut is, I'm doing what I need to do. That's what I'm excited about. So. I'm gonna finish getting myself together in here. We're gonna head out there and start chest, shoulders, and triceps. <laughs> All right, you guys, so I'm gonna walk you through my warm up. This is my last set. So it's gonna be a little bit heavier, but everything that I do, I started off very, very light, and then every set just kinda got a little heavier and heavier. So first thing I did was shoulder flies with dumbbells. Started with fives. So now I'm doing, uh, I'm going to do 10s again. I was going to do 15s, but I don't see them. We'll do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay. Next thing I did was some rotator cuff work. So five pounds, I use a five pound dumbbell, all sets, and I'm using a five pound dumbbell again. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. 
great. <laughs> the burn. I'm not gonna lie, since I've started incorporating this exercise on chest shoulder try day, my shoulder that I told you guys has been feeling wonky these past few weeks has actually felt better, like a lot better. So I'm thinking it was just like, you know, weak rotator cuff mobility, things like that. So even once it never hurts again, I'm gonna always do this type of stuff. Just because it doesn't hurt, it just makes you stronger, right? So other side. It's all about taking care of our bodies because we only get one, right? <laughs> and I would be devastated if I couldn't lift weights. So I'm gonna be proactive and not reactive. <sighs> All right. Next, we're gonna go over to the chest dip machine. So let's go. All right, so before my bulk took place, I was very close to unassisted chest dips. Like I was only 20 pounds away from it. Now not so much, but that's okay. It's okay. We're not gonna live in the past, we're gonna move to the future. So, so with this, the more weight you have on, the easier it is. So I started with more weight for my first set, and every set to follow, I've decreased the weight, meaning I've made it more challenging. So it's the opposite. All right, so and I was only getting through like five reps. Ooh, I think this thing is like broken at this point. So let's see how many I can get this set. I'm gonna put some more weight back on here. That's it. Then last but not least, some tricep dips. I told you we're getting back into calisthenics. We gonna be a calisthenic athlete, <laughs> okay? Which means I gotta slim the fuck down to make it easier. <laughs> Time to do the actual workout. <laughs> All right, so since I'm dealing with a left leg injury, we're not gonna do any like jumping around today when it comes to like the cardio portion of the lift. We're gonna do core. Strong core is essential, so why not? We're gonna start with shoulder flies. I'm gonna do 15 pounds. And then the first set of core, we're gonna do planks with no weight. And then I'm gonna grab my 45 pound plate and add that to my back for sets two and three. So let's start with the first set of shoulder flies and let me get some music in my ear. I really need to find some new music. Nah. All right, we're gonna hold for, let's drive for 60 seconds. 
see how that feels. I'm shaking. <laughs> okay. Ten seconds. Woo. Sixty seconds. Not bad. All right, you guys, set number two. you guys I have my weighted plate here Oof. just got to get it on my back <laughs> I'll try to get 45 seconds one two and three Set number three. Nah. That's it. All right, you guys, we are doing cable flies. Great chest movement, right? <laughs> and in between that, we're gonna do tricep, I guess, what are they tricep kickbacks with the cable? Yep. All right, let's do set number one. 
and I'll make sure I squeeze at the end of each rep. That's it. You don't need a lot of weight for that. I only had it on 10 pounds. So. Alright, you guys, we're gonna do windshield wipers. I think that's what they're called. Uh, get some music in my ear. Some good music. Uh, we're gonna go for a minute, so 60 seconds. <gasps> Wait, that's not right. <laughs> you guys set number two I added a five pound weight so I'm at 25 on both sides let's see how this feels <laughs> all right here we go added a five pound, so I have 15 on here now. Mm. 
Na. Mm. Na. Na. Mm. Na. That's it. All right, you guys, windshield wipers again. All right, all right. Set number three. Oh, I was like, why is one side lighter than the other? I didn't adjust it back. <laughs> ah, okay, now it's time for set number three. Yeah. Make sure you guys squeeze when you get to the bottom. Increase the weight by five pounds. That's too heavy. Let me take it down. That's it. God damn. Mm. Nah. 
Да. 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 Goddamn. All right, you guys, tricep push downs with a hold at the bottom. You guys we got upright rows so I'm gonna start with 80 see how many I can do and then drop down to 70 if it's too heavy Ooh. all right here we go That felt good. Just out at seventy. you guys so I figured we'd sit in here for a few minutes and just chit chat about the workout later on today we are meal prepping so we're gonna have lots to talk about <laughs> as we meal prep okay so hamstring still feels a lot better I started to feel a little bit of pressure on it but that might just be because the Aleve is wearing off I'm not too sure 
Um, body feels really good. And the back is looking crazy. Now, I don't know what's been going on, but word has clearly gotten out like that 4 a.m. is where it's at because there's way more people in here this time than normal. Like, I was like shocked. Like, why are there so many people here on Wednesday? Monday is to be expected, right? Monday, start a brand new week. Everyone's like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be active this week. But Wednesday, I would think that it would start to die down a little bit, <laughs> but it didn't. But that's okay. I'm done. I've been getting here a little earlier too, just because I just sense that people are gonna be here more than normal. So, I feel good about today's workout. It's okay that we didn't really do too much, like jumping around or whatever. Still burned a thousand calories. So we reached the goal, which is great. Um, core work is really, really, really important, you guys. I was gonna say expensive, but it's really important because a lot of the movements that we do involve stabilizing your core and keeping your core nice and strong. So if you can get a strong core, if you can work towards building a strong core, a lot of the exercises that you see me do are gonna be so much easier because a lot of it is core strength. Like when we do standing shoulder press, when we do Bulgarian split squats, like uh, upright row, not up, well, yeah, upright rows, when we do bent over rows, like a lot of stuff that you guys see is about keeping your core stable, keeping your core engaged, and all that comes from doing core movements. So holding a plank, you know, just, just anything where you're slightly rotating your body but trying to keep your, your torso stable, that's really gonna build that core strength that your body needs to get through these lifts. And it also helps prevent injury, especially when it comes to lower back. A lot of times people hurt themselves, their back, because they're not keeping their core stable, they're not keeping their core engaged, and when you don't do that, you, your back tries to overcompensate, and then therefore you end up pulling something. So having a strong core is really, really, really important, and I will make sure to incorporate more core in our workouts. Some of the machines that you guys see me use, it takes the core stabilization away, so you're literally just working on whatever muscle group you're trying to hit. So. There's a Smith machine, or a Vixen machine, I Googled it. It's a Vixen machine, shoulder press. I did it last shoulder day, I believe. And so I'm just lifting my arms up. It's a shoulder workout, but I don't have to, I'm still keeping my core engaged, but it's not necessary because the machine is doing it for me. But if I was to do, uh, if I was to do standing dumbbell press, I would need my core for that because I don't have a machine keeping me locked in one position. So core strength, very, very, very important. It also strengthens your back so that you don't hurt your back because last thing you wanna do is hurt your back. When you hurt your back, you can't do shit, okay? You know, you cannot do shit, so you can't do nothing. So having a strong core is really important and I will work harder to make sure you guys see more core stuff. Also, don't feel bad if you can't hold a plank for a long period of time. When I first started my weight loss journey, uh, almost two years ago now, I don't think I could hold a plank for longer than like five or 10 seconds. So just slowly build up to it. It's okay. Like you're gonna get stronger. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And then you, you're gonna be able to hold it for longer. You're gonna be able to put some weight on your back, but don't put weight on your back if you can't hold a plank. Like if you can only hold a plank for like 15 seconds, don't put any weight on your back. Don't start putting weight on your back. I would say till you can hold your own body weight for at least 60 seconds, which you guys saw me do. And then you can start making it more challenging by doing uh, shoulder taps. You could start moving your legs with it. Like there's so many different variations of planks that you can do. You could do side planks. So many things you could do to make it more challenging. And you can also add some weight. And then when you do add weight, you guys, the, the biggest thing is if your butt starts to come down to the floor, the weight is too much. You should still be able to keep yourself, not keeping your butt up in the air, but keeping your back flat. So if, you're, if you notice that your hips start to go downwards towards the floor, take the weight off, okay? You don't want to hurt yourself. And you can hurt yourself. You can hurt your back. So again, it's all about listening to your body don't be trying to keep up with other people. Keep up with yourself. And just work on getting stronger every day. Nothing comes easily. You got to work for it. You got to be consistent. And 
it takes a while. That's the thing too. It takes a while to, you know, improve on your strength. And it takes a lot of consistency as well. Like you can't just come in here on a Monday and then only do once a week. Like you should be working out at least four times a week. Standard. Like commit to four times a week. And yes, I'm in here for a good amount of time. I think we're in here for like two and a half hours. But dedicating yourself to the gym, like, that's a commitment because you got to drive here, you got to drive back, you got to make sure that you have food in your stomach, you have to meal prep, you have to be here and actually work out, be mentally in the zone. It's a lot that goes into being in the gym. It's not just being here for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. Like, it's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes when it comes to being in the gym and seeing gains and you have to be willing to commit to the entire process you can't just commit to okay I'm gonna go to the gym and then after you leave the gym you're not here for seven days and then you eat like shit and you know no you're not getting your sleep like you're not drinking your water there's a lot there's a lot that goes to it and it's a commitment which is why most people don't do it but you don't have to be most people you can be that, that, that small percentage of people that actually stick with it. You have the ability to do it. You just have to do it. And it's not easy when you first start. Building habits is really hard, you guys, because you're trying to get rid of the old poor habits and then build new positive habits. So it's a whole process. It took me two years to get here. I started my journey in the end of May of was 2024, so May of 2022. So it's almost been two years of being a weightlifter. <laughs> and I remember when I first started, when I was doing seated shoulder press, my trainer had me doing, I think I started with like 15 pound dumbbells, right? <laughs> because it was all about form and learning how to do it at first. So to go from 15 pound dumbbells to I can do 50 pound dumbbells with a spotter, like, that's crazy, it's crazy, but look at how much time that took. It took two years, you know? So just understand that. I think even when I was doing dumbbell bench press, I think we started at like 20 pounds, if that. It might have been 10 pounds, you know what I'm saying? Because you have to, you have to crawl before you walk. You have to <laughs> make sure your form is right before anything else. So if you're going from overweight or obese, I was definitely obese, to getting back in the gym, learning new movements, getting comf comfortable, number one, and then being confident. It takes a lot of confidence to come in here, especially when it's not something you're used to. So if you've been doing that, like, be proud of yourself. It takes a lot of confidence to come in the gym because it, it can be very intimidating, especially when you get over to the weights because you guys, there's a couple of women who I see regularly. I mean, I don't be here. I'm normally here when no one's here at this point, right? But before I switched my time, when I was coming around 9 a.m., or even when I was doing evening time, there will be women over there, but it's way more men, way more men. Even when I go to the gold gym near my house sometimes, it's always men in the weight, the weight area. Women tend to be in the cardio section, which I talked to y'all about, stop being a cardio junkie. It's not going to get you nowhere, but it's way more men lifting weights than women. So it can be very intimidating when you don't see someone like you, like a fellow lady, right? So, you know, to overcome that, to push through that discomfort and feel comfortable weightlifting and be consistent with it, like you should feel really, really, really proud of yourself, okay? That is not easy and a lot of women don't do that. So be very proud of yourself. It doesn't matter how much you lift today, it's all about being consistent, being disciplined, sticking through it when it's hard, okay? And over time, you're gonna get stronger, you're gonna be even more confident, you're gonna be even more consistent and more disciplined, so give yourself a round of applause, okay? Pat yourself on the back, you're doing a great job. So that's pretty much it for the gym. Next time I turn the camera on, we're gonna be in the kitchen meal prepping, we got to make sure we eat right. We got to make sure we eat right. We got to make sure we're getting all of our nutrients, all that stuff. You guys have asked to see what I eat, especially because I am plant-based. So this is the very first video <laughs> where I'm going to be showing you guys how I meal prep, how I get all my food in order and all the things. So I will see you guys a little bit later for that.
All right, you guys, so I'm going to meal prep. So some of this stuff is already prepared. So like I already put my white sweet potatoes in the oven. They've already cooked. And then I already made my lentils yesterday and I put them in this big container here. So the lentils are already cooked. These are red lentils, by the way, so good. So all that's left, and honestly, is because I didn't feel like ch chopping it all up yesterday, <laughs> to be 100% honest with you guys. So I'm going to make an assortment of veggies, like saute them all together. So mushrooms, bell peppers, carrots, have a jalapeno here, onions. I have some frozen broccoli and some frozen corn, and I'm going to put it all in my skillet, season it, let it cook, and then we will put everything in my meal prep container. So let's go ahead and get to chopping. All right, so I already put the mushrooms in the skillet. You know what, when I cut this, I'm gonna wear some gloves because I have like a, I don't know what happened you guys, my finger, my nail kind of came off and like, it like ripped the skin and then it got a little infected. I don't know you guys, I don't know. I'm waiting for it to hurry up and heal so I can get my nails done, cause chow. <laughs> but anyways, okay, so while we're cutting up, I probably won't use the whole jalapeno. Y'all know I love spicy food, but this is gonna be spicy. I'm gonna just use a little bit. But okay, so we are on day four of the cut. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit like about what I've been experiencing, what I've been experiencing so far. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's definitely gotten easier. The first day, I feel like I said this already, but I can't remember. The first day of the cut was literally the worst day because I was so hungry. Like I was like starving. Like I was legitimately hungry as hell. And I, you know, I had like a little headache. It wasn't like anything like super serious, but all I could think about was eating. And I couldn't. And, you know, I'm proud of myself for sticking with it. Because that first day, you guys, I'm telling you, food is by far a drug. In my opinion, it's a drug. Like, it's, it's an addiction. And I start, when I'm, like, hungry like that, which is why I always tell you guys, like, don't go to the grocery store hungry. Like, don't do it to yourself. Because literally, I was craving foods that I don't even fucking eat. Like, I don't even fucking eat half the shit that I was fucking craving. But that first day of the cut, like, I was craving it all. Like, I don't even eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Not that I'm against it. Like, I would. But the whole time I was bulking, I never even ate the Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Like, I never, I haven't, I haven't had it. So, but all of a sudden, my dog wants a piece of pepper. Here, Brody. He loves bell peppers, you guys. Here you go, Munchkin. All for you. <laughs> I love how dogs take their treats and go run away and eat them in private. But, um, yeah, all of a sudden I was craving Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Like, go figure. I was craving lots and lots and lots of, like, sweet, not sweet potatoes, um, tater tots, french fries. Like, I don't know, y'all. This shit was just ridiculous. But, anyways, I'm so glad the first day is over. It's gotten easier. It has definitely gotten a lot easier. Don't get me wrong, I'm still hungry, but it's a lot easier to deal with. And like I said yesterday, I experienced most of the hunger like coming from the gym. Like that is by far like the hardest thing for me to deal with right now. Okay, one more piece and then that's it. He loves bell peppers. He loves carrots. What else does he like? He likes blueberries sometimes. I don't know. It's like weird. He Sometimes he likes pineapples. It just depends. <laughs> sometimes I'll give him a piece of pineapple and he won't eat it. And I'll be like, you know what? You made me waste this piece of pineapple because I put it on the floor. And now you're not going to eat it? So rude, right? Right. <laughs> I love dogs. I, I swear to God, I love dogs. But anyway, so yeah, that's just something you to kind of like keep in mind, which I expected. Like I knew it was going to be hard. I knew it was going to be challenging. 
It's not like I didn't know this was going to happen. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of like when I first started my weight loss journey. So almost two years ago, it kind of reminded me of that, but just not as bad. Like obviously when I first started, the cravings were way worse and the things I were craving, I actually ate. Like <laughs> I actually did crave five guys when I first started um, trying to lose weight. But that's because when I first started my weight loss journey, I was not vegan. I wasn't vegan. I didn't become vegan until like three months into my weight loss journey. So, you know, I was still eating chicken. I was still eating salmon and uh, catfish. I was doing catfish. What else was I eating? I think I was doing like, I don't think, I don't think I ate seafood. I'm not, you know, certain seafood, like shrimp. I never really was a big shrimp eater in the first place. Like, I don't know. When I was eating, you know, animal products, I didn't really like shrimp like that. I don't know. I was never big on seafood. So like when I would go out to restaurants and stuff, you, do you do you know that one person who like no matter where y'all go you can go to a fucking Mex- Mexican restaurant and <laughs> do you have that one friend or that one family member and it's like no matter where you go they have to order seafood like you're not even at a seafood establishment and you're getting seafood <laughs> like I'm a firm believer and you have to know where you're at to order what you're ordering I don't know <laughs> do you do you know people like that but needless to say like I've I've just never been not never but I never really was like big on seafood like crab legs are good where they work I don't eat any of that anymore but they would be good but see I didn't like them because I don't like all the work involved to get a little bit of fucking meat (laughs) but that's why like if if the crab legs already came you know (laughs) de-shelled then fine but to sit there and freaking play with the shells and use the fucking hammer to get it all open and you got to like slurp it out. I, no. <laughs> then the shit is expensive as hell. No, no, no. I would eat crab legs or lobster tails, you know, but I never, I never, I don't think I ever had a muscle before. I don't think I ever had a muscle. I don't even think I ever had clams before. I used to kind of like, what was it? Calamari. I used to kind of eat that. But that was only like if I was hungry as hell and someone at the table, like my mom, she would always order seafood. You know, they have like as an appetizer. So I would just eat it because it's right in front of me and I'm hungry, you know, but I never, nah, I never really liked any of that stuff just to keep it 100 with y'all. So I don't miss seafood. I don't even really miss burgers. I used to be, I used to love burgers. Like I used to love Five Guys. I used to love, um, like just going to a restaurant, like, like a, um, like a steakhouse where they actually hand roll the burger patties. So not like frozen burger patties, but like they actually have the hamburger and they roll it and then they put it on the grill. I used to love those type of burgers. I used to love them. Oh my gosh. And I was simple with it too. All I would ever want was just like cheese, bacon, some mayonnaise and lettuce. I don't need anything else. I don't want all those crazy sauces that you put on it. No, I'm good. (laughs) So, you know, but you know, black bean burgers are really good. You guys, if you haven't had one, try one. Like they're really good. So, you know, I don't, I don't miss any of that chicken. No. Cause you know, what's crazy. I started noticing like before, it was like after COVID, I felt like the texture of chicken just started being weird. And I kind of fell off of like chicken breasts, unless it was like in Jamaican food or something like that, like something with a lot of sauce. But I really just did not like chicken breasts anymore like I had used to. It's always dry. I don't know. I would like the rotisserie chickens that you could get at like Kroger or like Walmart. I like stuff like that, but well, I would do like the sizzling fajitas at like Mexican restaurants. But other than that, I don't know. 
I was already getting tired of meat. I had stopped eating pork chops. They just wasn't that good to me no more anyway. Now, the one thing I do miss is an egg. I said I was going to get, I was going to find a recipe for us to make a vegan egg. <laughs> I kind of forgot all about that. Because if y'all watched one of my gym vlogs, I came home and we made a vegan egg with chickpea flour and what was it chickpea flour and water I don't even know but the shit was it wasn't nasty but it wasn't an egg <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I do hate how us vegans call stuff stuff that is clearly not that like <laughs> like I see people make a steak out of um mushrooms <laughs> and I remember the first time I had made that it was definitely a disappointment it was definitely a disappointment but it's my fault because I for some reason I just thought like okay they're calling it a vegan steak so obviously it's gonna taste like a steak right <laughs> no <laughs> absolutely not I think if, if I didn't have those expectations it would have been good but because I was expecting it to really taste like a steak and it didn't I just was like really pissed off about it <laughs> because <laughs> I used to love steak you guys I started being one of those people like obviously depending on where we were going, where we were at but I did become one of those people who would order a ribeye like a bone-in ribeye that was my favorite cut of steak mm. I used to love Ruth Chris y'all that was my favorite restaurant I would go there at least once a month like mmm mmm their bone-in ribeye with the macaroni and cheese oh oh and they had the best Caesar salad I had ever had in my entire life. Like, <laughs> like Ruth Chris was my spot, boy. Like, I'm telling you, that was my spot. They got the steak right every time. And I would do a medium, medium, just medium. I wouldn't even do medium. Uh, well, I never could get into rare. I thought that was disgusting. But medium, medium was good. And the bone would just give it all the flavor. Oh, man. Mm, those are the good old days. <laughs> but we're here now, right? <laughs> we're here now. And when I say I miss these things, it's not like I'm tempted. Like, oh, man, I, I could just go right now. It's, it's not on that level. Like, we're just having a conversation about it. That's why I'm talking about it. I don't. I don't actively think about these places or these foods. <laughs> like, I'm just talking, how do we get on this? Oh, I was telling you guys about the fact that I wasn't vegan when I first started my uh, weight loss journey. And that's how we got on that. But yeah, so for me, the eats, for those of y'all who do want to be plant-based or even if you just want to eat more plant-based foods, I would say the easiest, I kind of weaned myself off of animal products. So I started with breakfast and just would eat the silk yogurt, which I still eat to this day. The silk yogurt, vanilla flavor. You guys, that yogurt tastes like regular yogurt. Like, I, I promise you it does. It, it really does. Like, I'm not trying to just be a vegan and tell you something tastes like something it don't taste like. It really, do, it really does taste like regular yogurt. I get the vanilla flavor, okay? So, or you could do plain, and I would, if I get plain... I drizzle a little bit of maple syrup in it to sweeten it up just a little bit. Um, but it really does taste like regular yogurt. So you could start there. And I put blueberries in it, granola, a couple of dark chocolate chips. Mm, so good. And I eat that. And that has been my breakfast pretty much the entire time that I've been vegan. I, I love it. I'm telling you, when I find something that I love to eat, like, I damn near eat it every day. Like, I'm, you know, I've been trying to find new stuff, especially because I'm cutting and I'm, you know, documenting all this with you guys. So I don't want you guys to get bored of my meal choices. But like, if I wasn't YouTubing, like what I'm making right now, I would probably eat this for like a month straight and not get sick of it. Like, I'm going to be eating this for breakfast, for lunch and dinner. So I'm not switching up my dinner. I'm not making two different meals because I'm fucking lazy when it comes to this stuff. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing all that. I never do. When, even, even when I was bulking, like, if I made a big pot of something, 
I would just eat it for lunch and dinner. Like, I don't really do two meals, two different types of meals. Like the macaroni and cheese. I would make a big pot of the vegan mac and cheese. And I would eat it for breakfast, or breakfast. I would eat it for lunch and dinner. Like, I don't care. So, <laughs> I'm saying all this to say, like, when I find something that I like to eat that's, like, really good to me, I eat the shit out of it. <laughs> I've never been that type of person that needs to change it up. Like, oh, I've had this for two days. I can't eat it on day three. It's just, <laughs> I'm not that person. <laughs> like, I am not that person. <laughs> like, I know there's a lot of people who are. Like, there's a lot of people who get tired of food so quickly. Not me. <laughs> as long as it's still good, like, it's not going to make me sick, I will eat it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Like, I do not mind leftovers, and I don't feel like making two meals. I'll just, I'd rather make a huge amount of one meal and, you know, just eat it till it's gone. So, I am currently chopping up this onion. But yeah, try to find meals that you like don't and you know what's crazy i always say i don't really care for salads i'm not gonna lie you guys i have low-key been craving a salad this is like a once in a this is like once a year thing like i i think i was on a little salad kick over the summer last summer like a big ass salad with homemade vegan caesar dressing um and I was just loading it up. I was putting lentils, not lentils, chickpeas in it. Uh, what else? Lettuce, obviously, tomatoes, onions. Oh, I was putting avocado in it, grapes. Oh, man. Walnuts. I was making a gigantic salad, and I was fucking it up. That's the one thing I will say. Oh, the onion. I can't. I cannot. <laughs> That's the one thing I can say about salads is you do get a shit ton of salad and you don't have to feel bad about eating it all. That part I do love because it's just, it's lettuce. Like most of it is lettuce. And I'm plant-based, so it's not like I'm loading it with cheese. I don't even really like vegan cheese. I like the cashew cheese, like the cheese I make in the blender, but I don't. I don't really eat the vegan shredded cheese that she would, you know, get. I don't, I don't really eat that. So, and it's not that I don't like it. It's good. It, it does taste like cheese. I have it from time to time, but it's not like, oh, I can't eat this without a slice of Violife cheese. Same with the burgers, like the black bean burgers. Most of the time when I do eat a black bean burger, I don't put a slice of cheese, vegan cheese on it. I don't feel like it needs it. So, but yeah, I might do a salad in the upcoming weeks. Oh, hold on. <sighs> I love onions, but I hate them for this very reason. Okay, so I got all my vegetables cut up here. So let me go ahead and turn on the skillet. All right, got my skillet on. I got an extension cord here because the outlet is on the other side of the island. So, okay. I'm going to put in some vegetable broth. I always keep vegetable broth in the house, like always, always, always. I'm not boiling the vegetables. It's more of a saute, so only a little bit for me, but cook your vegetables how you like them, okay? Like, I'm just showing y'all how I do meat. Then I have my seasonings here. So I'm going to do Cajun. And if you guys can see, this skillet is filled to the top with vegetables. But we know it, sh it, it, it shrinks. So it looks like it's a lot, but we, we know damn well this is not a lot of vegetables. And when I put it in my container, I'm not really going to measure it. None of these vegetables have calories. Like sweet potatoes do, lentils do. I mean, there's no real calories in carrots and onions. Like, what is like five calories? Like, I'm not about to be that anal on this cut. Like, I'm not. I I'm not. If you want to, go for it. 
Do you, boo. Do you. But I, I ain't doing all that. Okay, so honestly, the more veggies, the better. So got to get that fiber. I'm going to put in some onion powder. I got, ooh, damn it. I got some garlic powder here. And some smoked paprika. If I didn't have the jalapeno in here, oh, I threw the whole jalapeno. Damn it, I meant to put it back in the fridge. Damn. I put it in the empty mushroom container and was meaning to pull it out. I'm I'm gonna dig back in that trash and get it. Who? Shit. <laughs> I'm gonna get it out. It's on the top. It ain't. It's okay. <laughs> Who won't? But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna save that because this will probably only last me a couple of days because this is lunch and dinner. So yeah, I'm gonna save that. All right, so I'm just gonna let this cook. Y'all, I'm about to be so busy. I was debating. So they gave me my lease renewal. They took my rent up 12%. I'm like, what? So I am debating now. The lady told me to email them and just say, like, you know, you guys are raising the rent really, really high. Can we negotiate it? But I'm literally debating on whether or not I want to move. Like, moving is so much. It's so much. Like, I hate moving. I hate moving, packing, and then unpacking, looking at apartments. Like, it's the most annoying thing ever. Ugh. I, and I'm like, I'm, I don't like to throw off my schedules. So now I'm just like, ugh, I hate moving. So I have, I have to the 13th to decide if I want to stay or not. I love my windows. Like, that's the thing. I love my windows. I love my walk-in shower. I love this apartment. Like, I love this more than I liked my house. Not that I'm saying I don't, I miss my house. I miss not having people over me. I miss having a backyard, being able to cook out and grill. Like, I miss that. I mean, there's grills in the courtyard. But I do miss, you know, a house. But honestly, for me, I just felt like a house was too much. Like, my mortgage was definitely cheaper than this rent, for sure. But having to be the one responsible to fix things when it breaks, and I didn't like that. I really didn't like that. So I don't know. Still trying to decide if I'm going to stay or not. Hopefully it'll work out, because who paying 12% more? Not me. Not I. So, you know. And then they, they want to charge for parking. They went up on the pet rent. They went, up, they went up on the valet trash. And you can't, this is the crazy thing, you can't even opt out of the valet trash. How are they going to make you pay? Because I have no problem just carrying my trash to the dumpster myself. No, you have to pay for valet trash. And they increased it. I'm just like, bruh, what kind of shit are y'all on? <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But hopefully it works out because moving is a lot movers it's just it's just expensive it's so expensive to move because who lugging all this stuff not me <laughs> what <laughs> no all right so i'm going to put in my frozen broccoli now like so i think i put in a little too much vegetable broth it's okay. Lots of broccoli. I use like half of the bag, to be honest. And then we're going to put in some corn. This is from Whole Foods. Fire roasted corn. I love Whole Foods, y'all. And that's the thing. If I move back to the county, like it'll be too far of a drive to do Whole Foods. Like Whole Foods will be out of the question at this point. I'll have to shop at Wegmans. <laughs> I'll have to shop at Wegmans. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I just like Whole Foods. But they've been, I don't know what's been going on with their produce section. So, you know what, moving, they might be doing me a favor. Because at this point, it used to make sense to shop at Whole Foods for produce. But lately, like, they have been slacking. And by lately, I mean, like, for the past 
four to five months, I've been complaining about the produce department. So, at this point, I don't even need to really be over there. So, all right, so I'm gonna just let all this cook. I'm gonna scoot the skillet out the way because we're going to prep the meal prep containers. So, you could use a food scale. I'm not. I'm just, I have a measuring cup. So I just use that. But I would assume that a food scale would be way more accurate when it comes to measuring stuff out. Cause you can you can stuff, you can make some shit fit in a measuring cup. You can you can make it fit. So, you know, to each his own. It's up to you on what you want to do. So I have sweet potatoes here. So I have one regular sweet potato, like orange on the inside. But the other ones are white. They're Japanese sweet potatoes. They're so good. If you've never had a white, a Japanese sweet potato before, you do not know what you're missing. They are delicious, okay? Absolutely delicious. But um, anyways, so I got my one cup measuring here and I'm just gonna try to see how much I can stuff in this one cup. And then I will put it in my container. Okay, so I had just enough sweet potatoes to fill all six containers. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I have enough cooked lentils to fill up six sweet potatoes. I might end up having to cook some more. But I have a, let me show you guys what the lentils look like for those of y'all. Cause listen, before I was vegan, I didn't even know what the fuck a lentil was. <laughs> so. These are lentils. These are red lentils. So they look like little beans, see? Little red looking, flat looking beans. And I cook them in vegetable broth just to give it a little more flavor. And all I did was put some salt, some sea salt on them. I personally don't feel like it needs too much. So these are what it looks like when they're cooked, okay? But it was one cup lentils, three cups of broth or water, whatever you choose to cook them in. And I mean, you could eat them cold, like, they're delicious. Anyways, so I'm gonna do one cup. Yeah, I'm not gonna have enough for all containers. That's okay, y'all get the point. So just fill it up and put it in there. So I will make some more lentils. I don't want to do it now. I'll do it tomorrow because I got to get to bed soon. Y'all know I get up early for the gym. All right, so I got enough for two containers. Shit, I might just eat these by themselves right now. Only a drop left. There's not enough for another container so we'll only have two containers that are like technically all the way ready. The veggies are still cooking. All right, so my veggies are done. So I'm just going to literally just try to put an even amount of vegetables in each container. This smells so good. I love colorful things. That's one thing I will say about since being vegan, like I love colors. Like I love getting colors, like red peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers, just because the colors are so bright. Like it just feels healthy. I don't know. <laughs> like it just feels so healthy. Let me turn this off. Like you guys can have as much veggies as you want. There's a lot of protein in this too. Like when you eat a lot, like a little bit of vegetables, you're not gonna get that much protein. But when you eat a lot, you're definitely getting about 10 grams or so. So 
just gonna keep scooping. And they're full of fiber, so this is what's gonna help me stay full. That's what I'm saying. The hardest part is the coming back from the gym because, oh shit, because of the fact that my pre-workout meal, I'm doing one cup of blueberries, which is great, but by the time I sweat, you know, like, we're burning like 1500 calories in the gym. So by the time I get back, like that's it. <laughs> like it's gone. Like, you know, there's definitely a lot of fiber in blueberries, but I mean, come on. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's gone. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm like starving after the gym because, you know, I don't have anything in my stomach, but when I eat lunch, I am making the biggest mess ever at this point. But when I eat lunch, I'm full longer. But that's because look at all this fiber, like the lentils, the sweet potatoes, all these vegetables, you know. So that's why that is. And, you know, it's not like we added butter to this, you know, so it's perfectly fine. All right. All right. So these two are ready. All I have to do is just top them off. The other one, two, three, four, the other four, I have to make some more lentils to fill those. But these containers are full. So look at look at this. Look at how much food this is. This is this is a lot of food. This is a lot of food. This is definitely going to keep me full for at least four hours, at least minimum. Okay, you guys. So the very last thing that we have to do is log this into my fitness pal. So once I put in the one cup of sweet potatoes and the one cup of cooked red lentils, the total amount of calories is, uh, where are we at? Where are we at? 340 calories. And as far as the macros are concerned, 20 grams of protein, that is really, really good. 67 grams of carbs, 24 grams of fiber, six grams of sugar, and one gram of fat. So this is a very, very healthy meal. Remember, I only get 1400 calories a day, so I have to use them wisely. And the wisest way to use them is to eat foods with lots of fiber so they can keep me feeling fuller longer because I can't really eat. <laughs> so, okay, this is gonna last me. I have lunch, dinner, so one, two, three. This is three days worth of food. <laughs> so we will be back at this in a couple of days. I gotta figure out what we're gonna eat next time. <laughs> but let me know if you guys have any questions. Write your response, write questions down in the comments. Let me know if you if you make this, please. Especially people who are not vegan. Like I want to know, did you try the red lentils and fall in love? Like please let me know. Please let me know. And try the white sweet potatoes. I got these at Whole Foods. That's one thing I like about Whole Foods. They have like so many different options for a sweet potato. <laughs> like it's crazy. It's, you know, options that you're not going to get at Walmart. Not knocking Walmart, but I don't feel like Walmart is going to carry a white sweet potato. Maybe in different regions or whatever, but definitely not the Walmart near me. So let me know if you guys try this. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me this evening. And if you have any ideas for meal prep for me, let me know. Remember, I'm plant-based, so I don't eat animal products. So no meat, no dairy, no seafood. <laughs> all right, y'all. See y'all later. Bye.